What does the narrow path mean? Um, Maybe explain where that's even yeah. coming from. Yeah. So Jesus says in the Gospels, uh, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many walk it. But narrow, narrow is the path that leads to salvation, and few find it. A couple of thoughts. There's a theologian named Dallas Willard who passed away recently, and, and he defines the narrow path as a single-minded devotion to Jesus. And I think that's a great definition. And the reason it's so important is because there are so many things out there in this world that distract us. Uh, the other reason that I think it's a great definition is because that is a definition that I think is true. It goes right to Hebrews 12 too, where the preacher of Hebrews says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That's what it means to walk the narrow path. But that also keeps us very humble. Uh, sometimes we, we read those verses and we go, I am walking the narrow path, right? I've found Jesus, I've found the way, and all those people over there and out there, they're all walking the path to destruction. And yet, if it's a single-minded focus on Jesus, this is a question not only for like people out there, it's a question for us right here. You may remember the story, Mary and Martha, they're over, uh, they're having Jesus at their home one day, and uh, Martha gets really distracted by all the preparations that have to be made, and Mary just sits there at Jesus' feet. And finally, when Martha gets so frustrated, she goes to Jesus and she says, hey, don't you care? I'm doing all the work by myself. Uh, tell my sister to help me. Jesus says, wait just a second. Mary has chosen what is better. Only one thing is needed and it's not going to be taken from her. And that one thing is Jesus. And so here's the question for us in our lives. Do we walk the narrow path? Our eyes, are our eyes fixed on Jesus? Do we keep our focus and our hope on him? You know, one of the things when I hear that answer, and I think it's a wonderful answer, but one of the questions that then comes into my mind is the issue, well, what if I'm not on the narrow path? What if I'm not walking with that single-minded devotion that Dallas Willard speaks of with regard to this narrow path? And the reality is I would take you, I would point us to the thief on the cross. That man clearly did not walk the narrow path, did he? That man didn't live a life that was perfect and holy. He lived a life of rebellion and sin. And yet, in repentance, he came to his God and he said, essentially, I believe in you. Please forgive me. And Jesus' answer was yes. His answer was literally, today you will be with me in paradise. God's plan for us is a perfect masterpiece life. That's the narrow path. From Ephesians chapter 10, that God has planned this perfect masterpiece life. You and I struggle to stay on it. Sometimes we struggle to even step onto it, even for a day at a time. And yet God has this plan for us that when we're in his word, when we're walking with him, when we're surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ who hold us accountable, God has a plan for us that is utterly and completely amazing. amazing. So when we think about this narrow path, it's not threatening. It's inviting. It's an invitation by Jesus to us to walk with him in the life, in the way, with the faith that he intends us to have. 